Hello and welcome to 2D Foundations. My name is Bonnie Stipe. I'm the professor for the course. You guys can feel free to refer to me as Bonnie. Um, I just want to quickly go over a few things about the course. Just the overall setup, what to expect for the semester. We're going to go over the syllabus and then I'm also going to go over the materials, which I know I've gotten a couple emails already, so just want to make sure everybody's clear on the materials that you need for the course. Okay, so when you first log into Canvas, this is what you should be seeing. If you're new to Canvas, you can access uh, Chabot's Canvas sites by going to the Chabot College homepage, and there's a link to Canvas at the bottom there. If you're an iPad user or uh, you're also accessing the class on your phone. They do have Canvas apps that are useful. And I'll go into a little bit later, uh, but specifically when you're uploading photos, the Canvas app for your phone is very helpful. Okay, so um, when you log into Canvas, if you haven't logged in before, your username is always your W number. And the password is the first two letters of your first name, the last two letters of your last name, and the last four of your W number. And you can go into settings and change your password if you need to. Okay, so I'll take you on a little tour here. This is the home page that you'll land on. Here's your what the welcome video that you hopefully clicked on already or you accessed through the email. But where most of the, co the course content is, is in the modules. So we're going to start here at start here and uh, go through and read over all these things. Um, there is a discussion post where you have to introduce yourself, we'll all sort of talk to each other. For the most part, all of the discussion posts, there is a requirement to respond to two of your classmates. If you don't respond to two of your classmates, you won't get full credit for the discussion post. So just keep that in mind. And you want to do more than a, for example, somebody's posting an image of their work, that, and then I like that. You want to give them some good feedback. So make sure that you're responding with a paragraph or so uh, to get full credit. So we're going to... Um, you can kind of see here's our week one agenda, but I'm going to start talking about our syllabus first, just as that's sort of the most important part. Uh, just once again, this is the information for the course. This is 2D Foundations. Uh, my name's Bonnie Stipe. Since everything's online right now, um, my office hours will be online as well on Monday, Wednesday, 3 to 5.30. My contact info, uh, you can reach me at bstipe at chabotcollege.edu. You can also um, call me or text me at the 510-457-1464 number. Um, I will say... That is sort of an extension online phone number that I have, so sometimes I will turn it on or off, so don't expect a response back in the middle of the night. But if it's easiest for you to text, feel free to text me all you want. So, course description for the course. This is a entry-level course meant to... Um, based around the concepts, applications, um, and historical references of two-dimensional art and composition. So the idea is this class is meant to be an introduction for all of you who are going into any field in the art. I know this is a requirement for a lot of different programs. Uh, oftentimes it's even a program for elementary education. And the idea is you're getting a lot of vocabulary, you're getting sort of the basics of design, and it's meant to help you in whatever path you choose in the arts. So some things we'll go over in this course. Um, you are going to 
demonstrate uh, working knowledge and understanding of the basic elements of two-dimensional art, which include line, shape, texture, value, color, and spatial illusion. The elements of art is uh, what this class is based around. All of our projects are based around those things. So keep those in mind. Uh, you'll have, we do have a couple little vocabulary tests that are part of the class, but you'll also use all this terminology as you critique and look at uh, your classmates' artwork. You are also going to uh, demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the organizing principles of two-dimensional art, including balance, proportion, repetition, contrast, harmony, unity, point of emphasis, and visual movement. So the elements are basically the things that art is made out of. They're those building blocks. The principles are how you arrange them on a page, so how we make an artwork interesting. In essence, that's all that this class is about. You're also going to produce visual works of art. We have uh, about nine projects this semester, each one of those based around the element, elements and principles. It's uh, not only going to learn about them, but you're going to demonstrate that knowledge. You also will get the chance to make individual aesthetic decisions and judgments related to your own artwork. Uh, one of the things that's really interesting to me about this class is I get to see each one of you develop your own aesthetic style. So uh, aesthetics is something that we'll talk about a lot this semester. Uh, we also will translate ideas and visual experiments into and look at both formal and conceptual approaches. So we're also going to think about what makes an artwork interesting. So we, we think about how it looks, but we're also going to think about that meaning of art. We do uh, write and discuss critiques of artwork. We'll look at some artworks that uh, famous artists or historical artists have made, but you'll also look at each other's work and critique it. So part of that, uh, part of sort of um, embracing or enhancing your own personal aesthetic is understanding why you like something or why you don't like something and having the vocabulary to explain that. Examine and compare and analyze historic, historical and contemporary examples of two-dimensional art with a global context. So, like I said, we're going to look at artwork from all over the world, uh, and we're going to really think about and analyze what that, uh, what the aesthetics of that art is, and what the meaning, uh, and how that un under that helps our understanding of the work. Okay. So, learning outcomes, we will develop painting, drawing, collage, and assembly techniques along with individual sty style and context, content, sorry. So, uh, just a note on this, most of the projects that we're going to do will involve drawing. We also do color theory and painting. We do a little bit of photography and also collage. So we're going to use all those elements and principles of art using those materials. We're going to design unique compositions using the elements and principles of design that show craftsmanship and attention to detail. Craftsmanship is a huge part of this class. And craftsmanship online really focuses on those finishing touches. So we'll talk about how you can uh, take pictures of your work and represent it in a very professional way. So that's one of the things that we'll go over. Right, a formal analysis of a work of art that describes the elements and principles. So that's the third important part of this class, which is vocabulary. Describing your understanding of the content intended by the artist. Course structure, this course is entirely online, which does present some unique challenges. 
but, you know, there also are some benefits to being online. The fact that you can rewatch demos, rewatch a lecture over if you didn't understand it. Uh, and I think one of the unique things specifically on Canvas is that you can give very detailed notes for students when they're working on their compositions uh, and uh, trying to figure out which one is the best and to, to make into their final piece. So it's very important that you do all those sort of smaller point build up projects before the final. Don't skip over those. That's how you're going to get your feedback for your final piece. If you are having problems accessing a computer, we do have uh, some hot spots and computers that you can take out from the school to send you an email um, giving you some information on where you can find those. Uh, you will, especially the tests, you definitely will have to take on a regular computer because they're really hard to take on a phone or a tablet. Um, and some of the content, it's just easier to read on a larger screen. I will say for uh, taking pictures of your artwork, a cell phone is great and it works really well with the app. So uh, if that is one of the tools you have to access the internet with, that's great as well. Netiquette. Um, if you haven't heard about this in other classes, netiquette is the idea of behaving properly online. This is really important in an art class because I know as artists we can be very sensitive about something we've spent a lot of time on. Uh, so understanding differences and how things might come across online is very important. So you want to be sensitive to the fact that there are different cultural and linguistic backgrounds, uh, as well as different political beliefs and religious beliefs. That doesn't mean that if you made an artwork that is about one of those things, that uh, that's not acceptable in some way. You can, especially in art, uh, sometimes you talk about difficult or controversial subjects. Uh, the idea behind netiquette is that you are being sensitive in the way that you talk about them. So you, you're thinking that other people might have different beliefs outside of your own. Um, using good taste when composing your responses in discussion for, uh, forums, so no swearing or profanity. Um, all, you could also consider that slang could be misunderstood or misinterpret, misinterpreted. So if you're, or, you know, think about how it might come across or maybe someone might not have some, an understanding of that. Don't use all capitals when composing your responses. You know, that makes it seem like you're shouting at somebody and could be seen as impolite or aggressive. So you want to think about the way in which you even, you, your font comes across. Actually, we'll talk about that a little, little bit later project, the idea that text can have meaning in itself. Um, be respectful of other people's views and opinions. Avoid flaming, so publicly attacking or insulting. So, you know, you don't want to pile on somebody if they have a different opinion than your own. We're trying to keep this a, an open forum. So, you know, even if you don't agree with somebody else's beliefs, uh, approaching them in a way that can help change their understanding is always better than attacking their different beliefs. Be careful when using acronyms. Um, so an acronym is where you say uh, Roy G. Biv, for example, when you're describing the rainbow, where uh, Roy G. Biv is meant to stand for red, orange, yellow, green. Uh, there's all sorts of acronyms for many different things. So if you don't uh, know what those acronyms are, it can be difficult for somebody to understand, so always make sure that you type it out first. Use good grammar and spelling. Avoid using text messaging shortcuts like LOL or JK or, you know, things like that. Um, you know, there are... I totally am understanding that there are uh, can be um, grammar and spelling mistakes, especially when you're typing out a post. You'll probably see one from me. 
The idea is that you're tr doing your best to try to correct those so people can easily understand you. Evaluation. So uh, one of the big benefits to being online is that you can clearly see what you're what grade you're getting at all points. That's a huge benefit. Um, so you have assignments, projects that you'll finish, but there's also some build-up assignments to help you along with to have lesser points. You can kind of think of those as participation and ways to get feedback. Also, your discussion posts have points associated with them that are participatory. Um, uh, critiques are another way that you are evaluated. Level of craftsmanship, meaning how clean something looks, how much time and effort you've put into uh, making it look professionally done, a willingness to experiment so you're willing to kind of go out of your comfort zone. Um, those are all things that you'll be evaluated on. Each project has a rubric associated with it as well, so you can kind of see a little bit more defined way that things are evaluated. This is just kind of a general, general evaluation for the class. If you do turn something in late, uh, you you will be dropped a letter grade, so make sure each one of these things have got a, a time that you're supposed to turn it in at. Don't not do an assignment because it's late. Make sure you still turn it in, but just realize there's going to be a little bit of a uh, points deducted. Um, so make sure you're getting things in on time. Online attendance, you have to participate. If you're not participating, you can be dropped from the course. Sketchbook, uh, you should keep a sketchbook for this class. It doesn't have to be a normal bound spiral notebook. Uh, but as you will see, there are specific sketchbook requirements that you have to turn in as part of the class. So a lot of your thumbnails, a lot, there's a lot of kind of warm-up activities that should be done in a sketchbook. Now, if especially because I know with the COVID crisis, people are having a harder time getting a hold of materials. Your sketchbook could even be loosely sheets of printer paper that you've put together in a folder. That's totally acceptable, uh, especially since you're taking images of them and uploading them to Canvas. But, um, you know... You are there are a couple of vocabulary tests so that sketchbook can be for helping you to take notes along with your drawings. Uh, so it is nice to have it all sort of collected there in one place. Uh, safety and hazard materials. We're not using anything that has any kind of, uh, you know, specific specifically hazardous. Um, other than you know you got to be uh, aware of when you're cleaning up your acrylic paints, um, how you get rid of those, but we'll go over those a little bit more clearly uh, once we get to the painting section. Course content, we kind of talked about all these things. There's some, re there's a little bit of repeat here, sorry, but it's just stuff that we're meant to include. I'll let you guys read over this fully. Um, academic dishonesty and plagiarism, um, you know, typically when I get to see you guys in person in class, it's very obvious if someone is being, uh, copying someone else's work or representing themselves falsely, just realize, you know, um, you should be using your own work, working on your own things. Um, if any infractions are committed, you can lose credit for the assignment um, or fail the course. So just realize it's, you know, you're not cheating on a test, but if you're taking someone else's work and claiming it as your own, that's the equivalent in an art class. Mental health and step, uh, stress management. Um, we do have a lot of support services here on campus. Uh, our, there's a link here to our counseling department that uh, sort of shows you all of the many different uh, student services that can help you if you're dealing with any of these difficult situations in your life. Uh, we also have a, a, stu a disabled student resource center. I put the number on here. Uh, I'm going to update this with the link because I know they're doing 
they kind of have online services right now. You'll see at the web page uh, if you click on the link that they can help you with any accommodations that are needed. You can also contact me directly if you have uh, concerns or accommodations that you need if you are, uh, you know, prior to when um, the DSRC gives you uh, your accommodation sheet. Okay, materials list. This is where I want to kind of go through and explain some of these things specifically. And I'm going to go to the Dick Blick website for that because I have some very clear pictures. Uh, you can Buy your materials anywhere you like. Maybe you have some of these already. The bookstore has kits with everything in it that um, you can order online and pick up there. I know they've went back and forth with exactly how that will look. If you call the bookstore, they can go over some more specific information for that. Uh, you could also get materials um, from any number of art stores in the area. Um, Hobby Lobby will cut, uh, Michaels will carry all of these things that are on here. They're, they're sort of universally found. But like I said, I'm just going to go to the Blick store because they have a very clear. Okay, so just to go over the materials here, like I mentioned, we're going to go to Dick Blick just to look at these, but you can go anywhere to get them. Um, so the... The set that you have at least has to have the primary colors plus black and white. That's a minimum. If you look at a lot of the acrylic paint sets, they're going to have a bigger variety than that. And, you know, acrylic paints, they can't, they come in a huge price range. If you buy craft paints, they're very cheap. Um, don't purchase the craft paints, though, because they are very bad at mixing. And what we're going to do with the color theory has a lot to do with mixing. You're, wanna, you're gonna wanna get a student grade paint. Um, Blick has a decent one of those. This is just their their brand is uh, Blick Studio Acrylics. I think they have a set of six. It's 21.54. I would expect to spend around uh, $20 for your set. I'd say that's pretty standard. Um, some other brands that are good, student grade brands, Liquitex Basics. Well, I heard from the books for the, um, because of the pandemic, Liquitex hasn't been making paints, so you might have a hard time getting Liquitex paints specifically. You can see they've got a, a basic set of eight that has, uh, uh, for 17, or they also have slightly larger tubes for, 24 um, with the six. Uh, so, you know, either one of those would be fine. One has a little bit more paint. You'd actually, for the amount that we're going to use it, a smaller set would be totally okay because you're not going to go through that much paint. We have um, two projects that use it. So you could get, you could end up getting one that, one of these that has a little bit uh, smaller, smaller set in it. So, if you have questions about any of the paints or anything, you can also ask questions in. There's a discussion post that you can post some questions in that I can respond to, or feel free to text or call me as well. Okay, but like I said, you, uh, you are not going to need the acrylic paints for mm, at least like a month and a half, I'd say. Short handle brushes. Same thing, you don't need these for uh, about a month and a half till we use them on the acrylic set. I'm just going over these first because it's the most expensive. Um, you want, you know, any paint brushes will do. Paint brushes, the same, they come in huge variety, different prices. Um, uh, as you can see, they all kinds of different categories. Um, you could go with one of these acrylic sets if you have some other sets at home. Um, there is uh, a simple one I'm thinking of. Um, 
I think this is the one that's fairly cheap. Um, you know, even just this beginner set of five is, is a decent price for $10. There are some sets uh, that Blick has that I've seen in store even for five. Um, you want a good mixture of rounds and flats. So let's see how this one, let's see if I can zoom in on this picture. Oh, there we go. Uh, flat has that flat end, so it's a good filler brush. The one on the end here is a round for details, so having a variety of sizes is important. Okay. Uh, pad of Bristol Smooth Paper, 14 by 17. Let me go to the Bristol Smooth. Okay. Uh, you know, normally when we're in class, I really encourage people to all have that same size of paper, mostly because um, it gives you a nice even board around the outside for some of the directions that we have. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but having a nice clean border around things um, really helps with craftsmanship. But um, the, most of the images that you're going to do are 9 by 12. So I know they sell um, some other size paper. As long as you can get a 9 by 12 drawing in there and have a border, um, you could get a different size paper if they don't have the 14 by 17 in stock. We're still smooth, but you really want the smooth version. Uh, there are different types of Bristol. There's a textured one that would not work well for what we're trying to do with it. Um, Go with the cheapest one. We, you know, um, Canson is a popular band. They're smooth, Bristol. You'll see that at Michael's uh, Hobby Lobby, too. Um, let me find the 14 by 17. This, you know, this is about $13, $15. It would probably be around there. Sometimes. Michael's, if it's not on sale, is their pads of paper more expensive, like 20 but you can use a half-off coupon. It brings it down a little more. Um, any size of these pads is going to have enough paper that you need for this semester. This has 25 Some of them have 15 That should be plenty of sheets, as long as you're not uh, making mistakes and throwing out the paper like crazy. Okay, uh, that you will need, uh, this one you'll need right away to do your, your projects on, your fin your completed projects on. So by next week, you're going to need that pad of paper. Um, set of micron plans or tomboy, several, uh, double-sided pens. So uh, the tombow is in the um, kit, but I'll show you the micron because this is more... Micron's more easily found. The Tombow, you so, sometimes it's harder to find. Sometimes it's not in stock at Michael's. So I'll show you both. Um, Micron is a type of archival pen. It's probably one of the most popular of these felt tips. Specifically, you can kind of see how it's got that little felt tip and not a ballpoint. Um, if you get the Micron, you should get a variety of sizes. Uh, the Micron, it's going to actually be a more expensive, sorry, I clicked on all color one. Um, it's going to be more expensive than actually the Tomboy, but, um, you're going to want to get like 005 is the smallest. I would try to get up to a one or there's a set that has a variety of, uh, sizes within it that would work. Um, the, I'll just, let's see if I clip it in. Oh, I just saw it pop up. Of course not. Eh, this is the right one, sorry. Mm, uh, it has two sides, let's see. It's a black one. If you get the kit, this is actually what's in it. It's got two different nibs on it. One that's a brush, one that's a finer point. 
Um, you could also use Sharpies for this. I'm totally fine with that. We are going to use a lot of the markers, and that's one of the things you'll need right away for our first project. So either Micron pens, the Tombow. Um, if she uses Sharpie, that's totally okay, too. It's not archival. Uh, but, you know, Sharpie, it, it'll last a while. It's not just going to suddenly degrade your paper right away. But it's not going to last, you know, 50 years like the Micron would. Black car sack or construction paper. We're going to use that for one project. You could use either whatever you can get your hands on. Glue of some kind. And then I, ideally... Uh, if you get the kit, it has uh, Mod Podge in it, which is going to be easier to use for the um, uh, for the collage pieces. Pull it up if you haven't seen Mod Podge. Or um, if you have acrylic paints, oop, I don't know what that is. Um, Mod Just have, oh, what well, keeps course correcting me to the wrong thing. Much. Let's see if it Let's just hope that shows up. Um it's essentially a a glue. Um you can also use matte medium if you use acrylic paints much budge and that medium are kind of the same thing, uh, but it makes it like a smooth, even glue for uh, your collage pieces. Paint palette. You could buy a paint palette. There is one that comes in the kit. You could also just use a white plastic plate or white glass paint. Make sure it's white because paint mixed paint looks differently if you're using a colored palette so make sure white you're using white it's very important blue tape blue tape comes in very handy for a variety of reasons um, you can use regular masking tape in a pinch uh, but blue tape has for more delicate surfaces and on paper it's going to save you some tears so uh, usually it's going to be around five dollars. Um, the most common kind is sort of this Scotch uh, 3M painter tape. You can pretty much find it anywhere, Target, Home Depot, those kind of places too. Usually for cheaper than the art store. Pencils. You could use any pencils just around your house. Make sure you're pressing lightly with your pencils. If you have a, a set of drawing pencils, try to use your HP for your unders. Uh, your under drawings, water container, whatever you got around the house, uh, one that you're not going to eat out of later, preferably, uh, rags for your brushes, ruler straight edge, you'll need this right away, um, you want one that's at least, uh, you know, as wide as your paper, like a 12 inch, 14 inch one should be okay, because for the most part, we're doing uh, drawings that are a little bit smaller. And uh, sketchbook notepad for notes. You're going to have a lot of warm-up activities that you'll need paper for. Uh, it's nice to have a sketchbook because it's all night and neat in one place. Um, if you don't have a sketchbook available, you could just use printer paper, keep them together in a notebook. You're going to take pictures and upload most of the assignments that you use in your sketchbook. Okay, so that's the materials. Like I said, there's a nice, I'll go over here, there's a nice little discussion post about this as well. And nice to, I guess, virtually meet you all. Make sure you complete the introduce yourself. Um, and also, there's a uh, discussion post there for questions about class materials. All right. Thank you.